Tropical Storm Jerry is approaching. Hello everyone watching this special news on BTB TNA Global Weather. I'm glad you're back with us. And I'm sorry to have to start today's news with some serious news. Tropical Storm Jerry, the system that has the attention of meteorologists around the world, is intensifying and approaching the northeastern Caribbean. Overnight, Jerry has been on a very tumultuous journey. Strong winds, high humidity, and unstable pressure have caused the system to make some unexpected changes. But this morning, the latest satellite imagery shows that Jerry is starting to reorganize, although it is still affected by upper-level wind shear. And if you live in Antigua, Barbuda, St. Kitts, Nevis, or Dominica, please pay close attention. This storm is getting closer by the hour, and it could bring heavy rain, strong winds, and dangerous surf. Jerry started out as a small tropical disturbance in the mid-Atlantic. At the time, no one thought it would develop so quickly. However, over the weekend, forecast models began to agree. This system has the potential to become a full-fledged tropical storm. And as predicted, Jerry quickly formed a center, reaching winds of 50 to 60 miles per hour, 80 to 95 kilometers per hour. What's remarkable is that while Jerry is still weak and has yet to organize its structure symmetrically, it's moving over very warm water, up to 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, a huge source of energy for any storm. But fortunately, higher up, strong westerly wind shear is keeping the system from developing too quickly. NOAA meteorologists say, Jerry is a fairly loosely structured storm, with the main body of activity concentrated to the east of the center. This means that even if the center doesn't directly cross the island, the rain bands can still have a significant impact. This morning, St. Kitts, Nevis, and Antigua began to see the first showers. This isn't the center of the storm. Just the outer rain bands of Jerry, but it's enough to bring wet ground, strong winds, and high seas. To the south, Trinidad and Tobago experienced a small tornado yesterday, causing damage to some coastal areas. This is a testament to how dynamic the Caribbean atmosphere is. There are so many factors at play, from moisture flow from the south, upper-level wind shear from the west, to dry air from the North Atlantic. All of this combines to create an explosive environment where even the slightest change could make the system more dangerous. Jerry is currently offshore about 150 kilometers east of Antigua and Barbuda, moving west-northwest at 20 kilometers per hour. While not yet a hurricane, maximum sustained winds have reached 85 to 90 kilometers per hour and could increase over the next 24 hours. Tropical storm warnings are in effect for areas from Guadeloupe to Dominica, St. Martin, Anguilla, Antigua and Barbuda. Some other areas, such as the British Virgin Islands and the U.S. Virgin Islands, have already entered preparedness mode. If you are in this area, the most important thing now is to prepare for heavy rains, strong winds, and high seas. Waves could reach 3 to 4 meters offshore, especially tomorrow night when Jerry is at its closest. The big question now is, where will Jerry go next? The European model, ECMWF, has Jerry's eye likely to be close to Antigua and Barbuda, just 95 miles, 153 kilometers, to the northeast. The U.S. model, GFS, has it slightly further out, around 177 kilometers. Despite the slight differences, both models agree that Jerry will not make landfall directly, but will instead skim the northeastern Caribbean before beginning a turn north towards Bermuda. However, and this is the important point, if Jerry remains weak, it could be sucked into a lower pressure area to the south, meaning it will move closer to the Caribbean islands. That would bring heavier rains and stronger winds but still result in a weaker overall system. A good and bad scenario, depending on where you stand. According to the latest data, Jerry's rain bands are packing winds of 70 to 80 km per hour, and in some cases, up to 100 to 120 km per hour, as these rain bands sweep through. 
You'll hear the wind howling through your windows, the branches of trees shaking, and the seas roaring. On the wind map, the pale white areas represent areas of tropical storm force winds. While the red areas are near the eye of the storm, where winds can be much stronger. But fortunately, the eye of the storm is still offshore, and that's what's keeping large islands like Puerto Rico, St. Lucia, and Haiti from the worst of the winds. One factor that's keeping meteorologists on their toes is the extremely high sea temperatures. From the eastern Caribbean to the Gulf of Mexico, temperatures are averaging 29 to 30 degrees Celsius, 1 to 1.5 degrees Celsius above the long-term average. This heat is a huge source of energy that helps hurricane systems develop. And while Jerry is struggling with wind shear, a quiet period in the upper atmosphere could see it intensify very quickly, becoming a Category 1 or even Category 2 hurricane. The Gulf Stream, which runs along the U.S. East Coast, is also in hot mode. If Jerry continues north, it will encounter this energy and potentially intensify again before heading towards Bermuda. While all eyes are on Jerry, in the western Pacific and Central America, another major rain system is causing serious flooding in Guatemala and Mexico. Southern Mexican provinces have even recorded over 200 millimeters of rain in just 24 hours. This has put areas from Guatemala to El Salvador, Honduras and even the southwest U.S. under flood warnings. In other words, both the Pacific and Atlantic are active at the same time. This hurricane season has been unique and unpredictable. We have seen systems emerge one after another, sometimes in parallel, and now Jerry is just one part of that complex picture. The latest models show that behind Jerry is another disturbance forming, which could become the second system in the Atlantic hurricane chain. Forecasters liken it to a line of cars coming off a tropical conveyor belt, one storm after another. At the same time, off the southeast coast of the United States, a large coastal system is also gathering energy. Under the influence of a cold front moving in from the north, this region could absorb moisture from Jerry, creating a hybrid system, part tropical, part subtropical. This scenario has happened before, and it often brings high waves. Prolonged rain and strong winds along the coast from Georgia to North Carolina. Take a look at the forecast rain map, Antigua, Barbuda, Guadalupe, St. Kitts and Nevis could see 100 to 150 millimeters of rain, with some areas reaching 200 millimeters, 20 centimeters, if the rain band lingers for a long time. Other islands like Dominica and Martinique could see less, around 50 to 80 millimeters. This means there is a real risk of flash floods and landslides, especially in mountainous or poorly drained areas. Civil defense agencies in the Caribbean are ready to activate high alert. Preparing for temporary evacuations, if conditions worsen tomorrow night, Jerry will not only bring rain and wind, but will also make the Caribbean extremely dangerous. Wave models show that wave heights could reach 4 to 5 meters, especially in the eastern part of Antigua and Barbuda, which will be most directly affected by the strong wind band. If you are a fisherman, sailor, or traveling in this area, absolutely avoid going out to sea for the next 48 hours. Beach resorts have also started clearing their outdoor areas, as waves could wash ashore overnight, especially during high tides. According to the current model, Jerry will leave the Caribbean on Friday, starting to move north, towards Bermuda by the weekend. However, it is too early to say whether it will make landfall directly in Bermuda. The scenarios still fall into two categories, if Jerry weakens, it could move closer to the Caribbean, bringing more rain but less wind. If Jerry strengthens, it will be pulled further east, heading straight for Bermuda and could develop into a Category 1 or 2 hurricane. And either way, the Caribbean is still in for at least another 2 to 3 days of showers and rough seas. One often overlooked element of tropical storms is water spouts. When strong winds interact with moist air and swirling currents, small tornadoes can form over the ocean, moving inland in minutes. 
Trinidad and Tobago recorded one yesterday, causing damage to roofs and trees. Experts warn that the current environment remains favorable for waterspouts in the rainband south of Jerry. Especially tomorrow night and Friday morning. It's not just the Caribbean, the U.S. East Coast is also tracking a new coastal system. By tomorrow afternoon, a cold front will force the remaining moisture from Jerry South, mixing with warm water from the Gulf Stream, which could create a coastal low. That means the risk of heavy rain in North Carolina, South Carolina and even as far as Florida. Some models show 100 to 150 millimeters of rain in coastal areas, along with wind gusts of 70 to 90 kilometers per hour. This system is not directly related to Jerry, but is indirectly affected by its moisture and energy, which puts the Atlantic coast on high alert. When we talk about hurricanes, the important thing is not to panic, but to understand. Prepare and act in time. Jerry is not the strongest storm, but it comes at a time when the Caribbean is already tired, after a lot of rain, flooding, and high winds throughout the summer. So people should, check back up power, flashlights, dry food, secure roofs and outdoor items, avoid going to the beach or low-lying areas for the next 48 hours, watch for official bulletins from the National Meteorological Center or local authorities. Tropical Storm Jerry is a powerful reminder that, every storm, big or small, can be a real challenge, if we let it go, but if you're prepared, informed, and know how to respond, you'll make it through safely. Stay calm, protect yourself and your family. And don't forget, we'll be updating you 24-7 with the latest developments on Jerry and other systems in the region. Thanks for watching. If you found this newsletter helpful, please like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, so you don't miss any urgent updates. See you in the next newsletter, as we continue to follow Jerry's journey across the Atlantic. See you soon.